Okay. So I hope you have uh, started watching uh, the two chapters uh, of recorded pictures that I have. And you also start reading the module two material. So we try to cover as many as uh, topics of module two today, and then maybe continue on Tuesday and end also with module three, because module two and module three are just the two lectures that I have uh, recorded for another class on GenChem, okay? So we go uh, today to the topic of bonding. So whenever you have bonding, what do you have? I'm hoping you have already have some bonding, okay? So you bonding with your classmate, me uh, having a bonding uh, with you uh, as, a, as a teacher, bonding with the students, okay? So bonding, we could say it's just connection, right? So connection of molecules with one another, connection of molecules with another molecule, or connection of atom with another atom and connection of atom with an uh, same type of atom. Okay, so 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 when we're talking about uh, what we call bonding, okay, we will see how are atoms interacting with one another. Okay, so usually the part of the atom or so the subatomic particles involved in uh, bonding is the valence electron. The, the, the so-called uh, outermost electrons, okay? So valence electrons are the one that participate in chemical bonding. And Gilbert Newton Lewis devises a way to determine this so-called valence uh, electron, the number of valence electrons of a given atom. And you need here the periodic table because in the periodic table, the group number that you have there, the uh, assigned group number of representative elements, that's equal to the number of the valence electron. And to simplify, Lewis said that you can assign an electron dot symbol or a dot that represents the number of valence electron. And you can put the four sides of that having two dots at most, okay, to represent the valence electron. So the first connection that we have is the one that deals with a metal and a non-metal. So we have here the so-called ionic bond. Okay, so in ionic bond, uh, this is the electrostatic force that form uh, when a cation connects with the anion. Okay, so what really happened here, you have a metal that lost its electron and a non-metal that gains the electron. So from uh, this loss and gain of electron, you form a cation for the metal and an anion in a non-metal. And if you're going to look at the electron configuration from this one, okay, so as you could see here, okay, that electron in the outermost shell will go to the outermost shell on of, of the non-metal. So from uh, 1s2 to 2s1, it will become now 1s2, which is isoelectronic to helium. And then the fluorine upon gaining electron will become isoelectronic with neon. Okay. So as you could see here, the lithium, which is a metal, loses an electron and become positively charged or cations, okay? And the fluorine gained the electron to become negatively charged or fluoride, okay? So if you're going to look at the Lewis structure of an ionic compound, it is the loss and gain of the electron. And this is how it's being uh, written, okay? Now, the one that is more common uh, type of bonding is the one where we call covalent bond. So this is a, a chemical bond in which two or more electrons are shared by two atoms. So usually you may ask yourself why 
does two atoms share electrons? Why don't they have a give and take relationship just like the metals and the non-metals? So it has something to do also on the number of the electrons that they have. For instance, if you have fluorine, both of them is what we call seven electrons. Now you cannot give up the all seven and then being gained that all seven that was lost. So for them to achieve the eight electron uh, configuration in their outermost shell, it is better for them to share it. So if they share uh, two electrons with one another, overall, each of them has eight electrons, okay? So this is the Lewis structure of what we call a fluorine. And as you could see, the electron that they shared, if you have two electrons, you can form a single bond or a single line. And the one that is not shared, you can call it the lone pairs or the non-bonding pairs. So this is what we call the Lewis structure. And if you're going to look at the Lewis structure here, you can see that this is what? A single bond, a uh, single covalent bond. Now, if you have the water Lewis structure, so it is made up of what? One oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. So you can look at the valence electron of the elements involved. So the way that they do is they share their electrons. So the oxygen forms single bond with each hydrogen to give you uh, the Lewis structure. Okay, so the single covalent bond. And then if you have a double bond, so you have two atoms share two pairs of electrons. So there's four electrons that is being shared between two atoms. Okay, and if you're going to write it, you're going to have a double line. And then if you have two atoms that share three pairs of electrons, we have here the so-called triple bond. Okay, so if you're going to look at the relationship with the uh, degree of bonding, or as the bonding pair increases, you, you, you will see that the bond length decreases. Okay, and if you're going to look at the type of the electron, that, uh, of the atom that is involved to form the bond length, okay, so you could see if you have the same atom, okay, usually their bond length is different if one of the atom is different. Like for instance, if it's both hydrogen, you have 74 picometer, but if iodine replaces one of the hydrogen, it is 161 picometer because iodine is larger, okay? Or has a higher atomic radius compared to hydrogen. And to give you an idea about the uh, effect on the bond length, of a single bond, double bond, and triple bond. I think the best comparison is here. Okay, as the bonding pair increases, the bond length decreases. So from 154, it becomes 133 when it is double bond, and 120 when it is what we call triple bond. So what do you think happened in the bond strength? Which one has the strongest bond? Anyone? Alin dito yung pinakamalakas yung ano nila, bond strength? Triple bond. Okay, it's the triple bond. And it is best exemplified by, hindi nakasulat dito, N, or the so-called N2. When N2 enters our body, what will happen it will, uh, when it goes out our body? Is still N2 or other form? Yung nitrogen gas, when, when they go inside our body and when they go out of the body, they're still the same. Okay? What can break the N2 triple bond? Anyone? I think. Lightning. Okay. 
And I don't know if you observe it. If there's a lightning, usually there's a growth of mushroom because the high energy of lightning can break the triple bond and make nitrogen available to uh, living things. What's the source of nitrogen in our body? Anyone? Any source of nitrogen natin? Hmm? Dun sa mga nutrition dyan. Ano yung source ng nitrogen natin? Usually, we get our nitrogen from what? Anyone? Plants. Okay. Usually, we get it from plants because plants has some of them, the so-called nitrogen-fixing bacteria. Okay? That's the main source of our nitrogen. That's why... Uh, in the First World War, Germany's main source of nitrogen are manure. Okay? I don't know if you knew it. Sorry dun sa mga <laughs> kumakain ngayon. Ano sa tingin nyo nagpapabaho doon sa lumalabas sa atin? It's usually what? Nitrogen. So during that time, when there was a blockade, they have to produce nitrogen from other source. So there is a guy by the name of Fritz Haber. What he did is he mixed nitrogen and hydrogen gas at high temperature and high pressure and he produced ammonia. And for that one, he got the Nobel Prize despite the fact that he is also the one who developed the weapon of mass destruction, new chlorine gas during the First World War. One of the controversy upon this of Nobel Prize among Nobel Prize winner, okay? So if we're going to compare the properties of ionic compound and covalent compound, we could say that the ionic compound has a upper end. Okay, they're stronger. You're going to need higher energy to break them. And this is exhibited by the different physical properties where ionic compound is higher compared to covalent compound, which means they are stronger. Okay. Now, synonymous to this thing is we can also use the so-called polar covalent bond or polar bond. And it's something to do with electron density around one to Now, whenever we have uh, the so-called diatomic molecule, we could say that it's symmetrical. So if either you have an H2 or an F2, you could say this is like what they have, one here, one here. Okay. But if one of them is different like this one, fluorine and hydrogen, so you could see one is bigger than the other. Okay, One is what we call electron rich compared to the electron poor. And if we're going to look at this, okay, electron rich and electron poor, we could have a partially negative and a partially positive. And in some, they put it as a symbol like this. So if you're watching uh, the latest Star Wars trilogy, parang ano ni Kylo Ren, yung cross, crossword say, uh, uh, lightsaber. Crossword, cross <laughs> lightsaber. <laughs> okay. So this is where the electrons go. So there's a partially negative end and this is a partially positive end. And one property that dictates is this one, the electron negativity, the ability of an atom to attract toward itself uh, in the electrons in a given chemical bond. So we could say it's synonymous to electron affinity, okay? Or most likely we could say electron negativity relative the fluorine is the one that has the highest. So what does it mean? If you have an electronegative atom, it wants the electron to itself. Okay? Or sometimes it could attract the other electrons of the other atom in a given volume to itself. Parang yung aking ka na lang. So parang sasabihan nyo yung electron aking ka na. I'm just, I mean, too selfish for it to be Sure. 
Okay? And if you're going to look at the electronegativity value, this is what you have. So from left to right, you can say it increase. Top to bottom, it decreases. And the so-called electronegativity difference can help you describe the type of bond that will form. Okay? So if the difference is equal to zero, when does it happen? When you have H2, N2, or F2. Because you're going to subtract a number with the same number. So usually, the type of bond that you have are the nonpolar. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if the electronegativity difference is between zero and less than two, so for instance, you have CO, okay? You have CF. So if you're going to look at this, that will be what? Around CO, 1.0, CF, uh, 4, minus 2.5, around 1.5. So you have here what we call the polar bond. Okay, the polar covalent bond. Now, if the difference is more than two, for instance, you have Na and Cl, so that is equals to what, 0.9 and 3.0, so that is 2.1. What do you call this type of bond? Anyone? Ionic bond. Okay, so you have the so-called ionic bond. So that's the information that you can get in this so-called electronegativity difference. Okay, so the main topic that we have at least is how do we write the so-called Lewis structure? Okay, or how did Gilbert Lewis develop this concept that make us as a student learn? <laughs> So I have presented deep, uh, uh, in a different way in my recorded lecture, how to write the Lewis structure, if I'm not mistaken. Count the valence electron, then find what's the skeletal structure. So in this source that I have given you, okay, you, you draw the skeletal structure of compound showing what atoms are bonded to each other, and then put the least electronegative in the center. And then, for we could say, why do you think the least electronegative with a negative element in the center? Anyone? Any reason? Hmm? Para yung banding po, sir. Madami yeah. yung makaband sa kanya. Okay. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, yung, yung electronegative atom, they don't want to share. They're selfish. So you cannot put it as the one in the center because the center is the one that should be able to share electrons. Okay? Siya yung magsha-share no valence electron niya. So if you put the electronegative uh, electronegative element, hindi yan. Kami nga, okay, kanya lang. So kakanya lang yung electron as much as possible. Okay? So once you have that, you count the total number of uh, by valence electron. Add one for each negative charge and subtract one for each positive charge. And then you complete an octet for all atoms except hydrogen. Hydrogen usually what? Do it. And if you're going to look at the octet rule, ano bang octet rule? Okay. Alam niyo ba tong kanta? May ano na ba kayo noon? Isip na yung sikat tong kanta na to? Bay bayani, agpayani. Yung tayo ay magpocho, ocho. <laughs> okay, why eight? Of all number, why eight? So siguro kasi sarado yung number ng eight eh. Di ba? Why eight? Anyone? Bakit sikat yung number na kanta ni 
bayani ag bayani. Eight is because that's the number of the valence electron of noble gases. And the noble gases are usually stable. Noble gases like noble people, they don't interact with the common people. So if you have the octet rule, atoms loss, gain, or share electron until the valence electron is equal to eight. And there are what? Four strict followers of the octet rule. And the strict followers of the octet rule. So anong ibig sabihin nito? Okay, so meron ang kanta. Kahit na ano mangyari, ocho pa rin sila. Okay, whatever happened, they will always have eight valence electron. Okay, yung tinatawag nating sino. So everyone, all, all atoms, although later on I'll, I'll, I'll discuss the exception. Uh, yung hydrogen wala. Duet siya, di ba? Pagdalawahan na kang tatawag nating duet. Okay? And then if the structure contains too many electrons, you form a triple, a double, or triple bonds. You, you share the electrons on the central atom. So let's see this perspective paano compared doon sa example. So by, by this time, kung ginawa nyo yung uh, sa module na kinig kayo doon sa recorded lecture ko, you should be able an idea how to write the Lewis structure. And the question that we will have the quiz is you have to answer the Lewis structure for you have to write the Lewis structure for you to be able to answer the question. So you are asked write the Lewis structure of nitrogen trifluoride. So ilalagay ko sa center yung nitrogen because fluorine is more electronegative more electronegative than nitrogen. So ito yung skeletal structure niya. And then what do I do? I look or determine the valence electron. So where do I, uh, what do I need to use to determine that? I need the periodic table. So nitrogen group 5. So meron kang 5. Okay. Fluorine, you have what? 7. Tapos meron kang tatlo. So you have 21 plus 5. You have 26. So, meron kang 20 sa is na valence electron na available. So, 20 sa is, sa is, di yung ating uh, system, 6 of them is used as bonding pairs. You still have 20. And what do we do with the 20? We distribute. So, I can put 6 for each fluorine so that each fluorine will have Eight electrons, two of them being shared with nitrogen. So six times three is 18. So 20 minus 18, you have two. So I put it there so that nitrogen will also have eight electrons. Tanong. Or sa Espanyol, pregunta. May tanong? Hmm. Nakakasabay ba kayo? Hello, sir. Pwede yep. po magtanong, sir. Yeah. Saan po nang galing yung 6 po? What 6? Yung 26 minus 6. So, 26 is the number of valence electron. Oh. You have 21 from fluorine and 5 from nitrogen. Tapos, minus 6. Saan magagaling yung minus 6? Anyone? Sa bond po. Yung okay, connection doon, ni nitrogen siya kanila. Okay, yung tatlong connection doon sa skeletal structure. So the bonding that we have, which we start with one. And then kung meron tayong extra electron, 
or meron tayong deficient number of electrons, then we have to share the electron. We have it, I think, on the next number. CO3 to minus. So, yung connection mo is just this, right? So, we're going to look at this. What's the valence electron of carbon? Anyone? Carbon is? Four. 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 And then oxygen is? Six. Six times Six three. Four. Okay, and then, ano to? Plus or minus two? Negative Add two. Plus. Add po. So plus two. So everyone got those number? Uh, alam ba kung saan nanggaling yung number na yan? Yes. Yung iba? Hindi yan out of nowhere. There's a basis for that. Four is the valence electron of carbon. Six is the valence electron of oxygen. Since there's three, you multiply by three. Two is from the negative two. So overall, you have what? Six times three is 18. Plus two is eight, uh, 20 plus four. You have 24 electrons. Claro kung saan ang galing yung 24? 24 oras. Di namin kayo, tatampo na. Okay? So, initially, how many bonds? Three. Okay? So, meron kang three bonds and each bond has what? Two. So, you mm -hmm. subtract it by six. So, you still have 18. So, if I distribute all of these, six for each of them, is this correct? For the night, uh, for the oxygen, I think we meet the octet. But for the carbon, did we meet the octet? No. No. So you only have what six. So in that case, that's the time you have to share the electrons. So from a non-bonding pair or lone pair, gagawin natin bonding pair. So pwede ito. Pwede rin yung galing dito. Pwede rin yung galing dito. Which make this what? Anong tawag natin dito? This are what we call the resonance structure. So in a resonance structure, alin yung tamang Lewis structure dyan? The first, the second, or the third? Ano yung sagot nyo? Neither po. Ha? Neither Wala po. po. Neither, Wala. The correct Lewis structure is the average because they found out that the CO bond length are all equivalent. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Pareho yung length nila. Which we can put here as 4 over 3. Because if you add each of the CO bond there, okay, uh, one double bond and two single bond, you have 4. And there's 3 structures, so it's all 4 over 3 equivalent. Okay? So what we have here are all in paper. They exist only in paper. But in reality, None of these exist. And if I'm not mistaken, I have an example there of two animals that exist in paper. And when you combine them, the hybrid that they form exists in reality. Right? If you have the dragons from the Game of Thrones or House of Dragons, combine it with my daughter's favorite uh, literature animal, the unicorn, what do you get? If you watch the video, you know the answer. Rhino. Okay. Rhino. 
So you have the scale of the dragon and the horn of the unicorn, which is the rhinoceros. So ganun yung tinatawag nating Lewis structure. And I think I have a slide about it later on. Okay? Now, what happens if we have more than one possible Lewis structure? How do we know which is the correct Lewis structure? So for instance, in CH2O, you can write it like this. That's the what we call general or skeletal structure. If we're going to write the Lewis structure, we follow the number of valence electron here. So carbon is what? Four plus one okay. times two. And oxygen is six, right? Six. So six. overall, ilan yung valence electron natin? Wow. 12, isang dosena. And we're going to share the distribute the what we call electrons here. So 12, as you could see, one, two, three, do you have six? So you still have six more. And you want to follow the octet rule, right? So maybe you can put two here, two here. So both of these now has what? Six electron and one double bond. So each of them has now eight electrons, right? How about here? So you also have six and you still have six available. So we can put, okay, I put here. So that makes it six. Now, if I put two more here, I have the octet here, but the central atom was only six. So maybe I can put a double one instead there. So the question now, which is the correct Lewis structure? So here we introduce the concept of the formal charge. So the formal charge look only on the look on the difference between the number of valence electron in an isolated atom and the number of electrons that is assigned to that atom in a given Lewis structure. So we can have this formula. Yung number of valence electron ng atom, subtract nun, unpaired electrons. Okay? Tsaka yung one-half nung nasa bonding pair. So we can assign it here. So what's the total charge here, uh, formal charge of hydrogen here? What's the valence electron of hydrogen? Anyone? Hydrogen, anyone? So, pa kayo? One. So, you have one. And then you only have what? One bonding pair. So, that's one half of two. So, that means it has zero. The same thing here. Kasi equivalent yung hydrogen. How about carbon? What's the valence electron of carbon? One. Four, four. Four. And then how many unbonding pairs that you have here? So you have one lone pair, so that means you have two. You follow where I get the two? Itong dalawa dito. And then one half of how many single bond that I have here? One, two, three. So each one has two. So that's six. So, ano yung formal charge ng carbon? 4 minus 2 minus 3? Negative 1. Negative you have one. a negative 1. So, I hope you follow okay, the way I uh, answer this thing. Now, oxygen. So, ano yung oxygen? Valence electron? 6. Po. So, you have 6. Then you subtract it. Ilan yung oxygen dito? Ito. One lone pair. So that's two electrons there. Minus one half of. Gaya ng carbon, meron din tatlo. Each of them has two. So you have six. 
So this is equals to what? One. one. Positive one. one, sir. Positive one. So nakuha lahat. Now let we do the same thing here. Again, hydrogen. I could say it's zero. Single bond lang eh. Now itong carbon na to. Is it the same as that one? No po. No, because wala siyang lone pairs. Lahat siya ay single bond. Apat na si ah, one double bond and one two single bond. So that is what? Four minus, you don't have any lone pairs. And then one half of four bonds, that is two bonds, uh, two electrons each. So that's eight. So what is the formal charge here? Zero. 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 Now, yung oxygen, six. Okay. Meron kang lone pair, dalawa, which makes it four, and then one half of four. Kasi dalawa yung lone pair. So that is equal to what? Zero. Po. Zero. Okay. So you already assign the formal charges. So, Sisertensyahan na natin alin yung tama. Now, ang sabi pa dito, the sum of the formal charges of the atom molecule or ion must equal to the charge of the molecule or ion. So here, zero charge. Negative one plus one plus zero plus zero is equal to? Zero po. Zero. And then dito, lahat zero. So zero. Ganun yung ibig sabihin na. So, alin yung tama? So there are set of statements to choose which one is the correct one. So for a neutral molecule, a Lewis structure in which there are no formal charge is preferable to one in which the formal charges are present. So sino yung may pogi points a statement na to? The first structure or the second structure? So yung second structure, lahat zero. Yung first structure, meron siyang non-zero number. So in this statement, the second structure win. Now, the next one, Lewis structure with large formal charges are less plausible than those with small formal charges. So, sino nanalo naman sa statement na to? Structure 2 has zero, right? So, yun yung definition of small formal charges. So, foggy points again go to the second structure. Now, the last one, among Lewis structure having similar distribution of formal charge, the most plausible structure is the one in which negative formal charges are placed on the more electronegative atom. So, alin yung more electronegative atom between carbon and oxygen? Anyone? Oxygen. Oxygen. But what happened here? Sa carbon po nakalagay yung... Sa carbon nakalagay yung negative, which should be on the most electronegative. So again, kapag kinompare natin, which is the most likely Lewis structure, based on the three statement here, panalo yung second structure. Kaya? Tanong so far? Before we go to the next one, the, the resonance and the exception to the octet rule. Tano? So, if no question, we go to the next one. So I told you, uh, I'll talk about the resonance, but we already uh, discussed some of it earlier. So whenever we have one or two or more Lewis structure for a single molecule that cannot be represented accurately only by one Lewis structure, we have this so-called resonance. What is this? What molecule is this? And a molecule to? Ozone. Ozone, O3. So ozone is a resonance structure also. Okay, 
And then the one that we did, the carbonate, it's also a resonance structure. Okay. Now, do you think the BF3 will have a resonance structure? What do you think? Will BF3 form a resonance? Yes or no? The answer will be uh, given in the next slide because the next slide will tell us the exception to the octet rule. So to answer your question, if BF3 will give you a resonance structure, boron is one of the so-called less than eight electrons, okay? Hindi siya pwedeng maging ganito. Why? Bakit hindi siya pwedeng maging ganito? Anyone? Si Florin po is selfish po. Okay. Si Florin ay aking ka na lang. Okay. So, rather than share the electron, it's okay for the boron to have less than 8. Anything that is lower than carbon can have less than 8 electrons, like the boron and the beryllium, the example that I have here. So that's one exception. The next one, the add electrons molecules, like N. What do we call them? The label is always associated with UP students. Bago pa kayo, so baka hindi pa kayo ganyan. Usually, yung mga ganitong estudyante, the date September 21 is something that they, uh, what we call, celebrate or remember. Anong tawag dito sa mga molecule na ganito? Anyone? Nanilalabel yeah, use. Okay, nanilalabel sa UP student. Yun yung tinatawag na radical. The free radicals. They are destructive molecules. Okay? One that they say cause cancer. Now, in addition to this one, we can do anything. They have add electron molecules. Okay? So they don't obey the octet rule. And the next one is the one that we call more than octet. And this is often happen when n is equals to 2. Why? Ano difference sa n equals to 2 at n equals to 3? Anyone? This is module 1. Huh? Ano pagkakaiba ng n equals 2 tsaka n equals 3? Or maybe we can put n equals 1. Kalimutan niyo na? Hindi pa tayo nag -e exam Still November this? When you have n equals to 1, ano yung orbitals mo? It's only? S. S po. S. Kaya nga, duet lang siya. Pag n is equals to 2, you have? P po. S, S and P. S and P pala. So that makes you 8. 2 from the S, 6 from the P. But if you have n equals 3, you have what? S, S, D, and S, P, D po. You have an extra D orbital that can accommodate more electrons. That's why pwede kang mag-over sa 8. Like SF6. They can accommodate more than 8 electrons. Okay? So, tanong. Bago tayo pumunta sa geometry. Tanong. Ito na yung ano ko eh. Lama tanong? 
Si Dion lang lagi nakikita ko online eh. <laughs> yung iba hindi ko alam kung kumakain. <laughs> Nagpakita. <laughs> Sanay na ako. <laughs> so, question. So, mas naging clear ba sa inyo yung bonding? Now, the, the third one that we have, metallic bonding, that's the one that you have between metals. And they have this so-called C of electron models that allow metals to have the properties conducting electricity and heat kasi meron silang tinatawag na sea of electron. Okay? So question before we go on geometry. And I might use some model here. Okay? So so, so when we're talking about geometry This has something to do with the 3D arrangement of atoms in a given molecule. And whatever the geometry, it affects the physical and chemical uh, properties, okay? such as why is water polar compared to the CO2? Pareho lang naman sila na merong tatlong atom kung saan dalawang kanyang atom. Yung isa nasa gitna na mayroong dalawang atom na nakadikit. Okay? Now, the, the main model that describes the geometry is something to do with the valence shell electron pair repulsion. So, this model states that atoms put themselves in a shape where they should minimize electron pair repulsion. Why? Because electrons are what? Negatively charged. So negative, negative, they will repel. So they have to, what we call, find a way wherein they are far from one another. And because of that, okay, like they determine dyan yung shape. Okay? So I'll try to show to you So I'm not sure if you see something. Do you see something? Na merong orange? Yes, po. Yes, po. Yes, po. yes, po, sir. Okay. So I'm using here uh, a computer software that we use when we use here. So that is how an octahedral looks like. Okay. So I I'm trying to show it to you kasi nga, kailangan three-dimensional eh. So you have here a central atom that is connected to six. Okay, now I can make it in such a way like this. So if you're going to look at this, this is the one that has five atoms connected to a central atom. And if you're going to look at the shape, so I don't know if you can see it, you have two pyramids here in triangular shape. So we could say this is trigonal, pyramidal. Okay? So you have, uh, here, if you're going to look at the angle here, that's what, 100? No, that's 90. But if you're going to look at like this one, that's 120 compared to the other one. When you have the octahedral, it's all 90 degree angle. Okay? And if you have what we call four, this is what? This is what we call tetrahedral, okay? And if you have what we call three, not this one, because this one is when you have a lone pair, but if all of them are bonding pairs, this is how it's going to look like. So I'm just trying to show you a how they look like in a three-dimensional 
Kasi ang hirap kapag ano lang eh, 2D yung tinitingnan mo. So you have to make sure it's 3D. Okay, that's why I'm I'm, I'm ha happy that I have this uh, what we call software. So this is what we call a linear. Now you can uh, what we could imagine, let's say here, if one of them, if one of the bonding pairs become a lone pair, okay? So ang mangyayari ganito yung shape niya. So that is different from tetrahedral. This is just what trigonal pyramidal. So itong nandito ay naging what we call lone pair. So iba na yung shape niya. So ano mangyayari kapag isa dito naging lone pair? Let's say ito naging lone pair. Ano yung pag nawala ito, hindi ko kasi ka tega. I want tandalin. I think I can. Ah, tinanggal ko lahat. Yun lang yung problema. So if one of them becomes a lone pair, what do you see? What shape do you see? Let's say this one is gone. You see a a siso. Siso. Okay. Pag tinanggal ko pa yung dalawa, ano yung makikita nyo? Ito. So tinanggal ko to. Wala yan. T-shape po. So makikita nyo yung T-shape. I don't know if you know the actor called Mr. T. Masyadong bata na kaya nata kayo eh. But he had a commercial before. I feel the pool. Okay? Nakalagay yung sa lab namin. I pity the fool who don't wash their dishes or glassware. Okay? So, the way that you're going to do is when you convert a bonding pair to a lone pair, there's another shape that is formed. And the idea that you have is you just need to know this one and the corresponding Dito sa other book, tawag dyan A, X, and E, but dito they call it A, B, 2, or A, B, and E. X is for the number of the bonding pairs, E is for the number of long pairs. Once you know that, there's a corresponding, what we call shape on it. Oh, that's not the one, it's this one here. And how do you predict the geometry? Again, you need to know the Lewis structure. Once you have the Lewis structure, okay, you know the number of the bonding pairs, you know the number of the lone pairs, you can predict the geometry. So for instance, if you have SO2, paano yung AB in ito or AX in ito? So you look at the central atom, you count, okay, if, even if it's a multiple bond, you count it as one bonding pair. So you have two and one lone pair. And you go to, to the table. So I need AB2. Uh, AB2E. AB2E1. Okay. So you say, see there that it is what? Bent. Or the so-called B shape. So ganito talaga yung shape niya. Like this. So two bonding pairs, one lone pair. Okay? So if we have the SF4, so yung arrangement niya. So after you do the periodic table, you end up with this one. So this is what? In terms of ABE. So there's four. Okay? One. Two, three, four, and then you have a lone pair there. So you have an A, B, four, E, and then get the corresponding thing there. They said it's distorted tetrahedron, but that is also what we call the. Plana dito hindi na abutan. Ito, siso. That's how you predict the geometry. And synonymous to this geometry, you can also predict the so-called polarity. So here we answer the question, why is water polar and why is carbon dioxide nonpolar? You have to apply the concept here that we have learned earlier. Anong concept yun? Anyone?
electronegativity. Okay, so the difference here, electronegativity only involves what? Two atoms, but here you want to look at the total movement of the electronegativity, and we call it the dipole moment. So if it's just made up of two atoms, it's just easy. If they're the same, they're nonpolar. If they're not the same, so one has a positively negative charge and the other has a positively positive, uh, positively partially positive charge and the other one is partially negative charge. And if you're going to look at here, we could say that if you have a molecule like this, your dipole moment, okay, is not equal to zero. And if your dipole moment is not equal to zero, you have a polar molecule, okay? So polar molecules usually behave in such a way they have a partially negative and partially positive end. So without any field, this is how it is. But once you apply the field, so they align based on the opposite charges that they have. So how do we predict the polarity? We look at the band moments and the resulting dipole moment. NH3. So if you're going to look at the movements that you have there, so all go all going towards nitrogen because nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. But what if it's instead of hydrogen you have fluorine? So the movement will come towards fluorine because fluorine is the most electronegative. But if you're going to look at the overall dipole moment, it's not equals to zero. Here, it's not equals to zero. And if it's not equals to zero, what's the polarity? Polar or nonpolar? Anyone? When you have a dipole moment that is non-zero, you have a polar substance. You have a net dipole moment. So let's try. Water. Where is the electron going to? Oxygen or hydrogen? Oxygen. 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 So overall, there's a net movement towards oxygen. So there's a dipole moment that is non-zero because it's going towards the oxygen. CO2. Where is the electron going to? So oxygen. 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 But the thing is, opposing direction. So you don't have a dipole moment. Your dipole moment is equals to zero. And in that case, that's a nonpolar. Are you familiar with Levi's genes? Yes. Yung kasi yung genes ka dito. If you're going to look at the Levi's genes, ano yung makikita niya na parehong ganyan? If I'm not mistaken, there's a genes like that. And then, ano yung humihila sa kanila? Hindi ako marunong. Kabayo. The genes being pulled by two horses apart. Okay? How about this? Where do you think the electron going to? Sulfur or oxygen? So which is the more electronegative? Oxygen. So it's still oxygen. But the overall, there is a movement going down, okay, giving you a polar molecule. And then if you have CF, it's in all direction. There's no dipole moment, so it is non-polar. Now, what can you say? Which one are usually polar based on this? Example, 
usually the one that has what? Lone pairs, the polar. In fact, if you have an AXN, E0, so if it is an AXN0, we can write it as AXN. As long as the X are equivalent, it will give you non-polar substance. Anong AXN to? Anong value ng X, eh, ng N dito? Anyone? Two. One bonding pair, another bonding pair. Anong AX to? What's the value of N here? Four, four. Four, four. Now, how about this? This is what? AX, E. So this is one, two, N, one. So you can just write it as E. Now, how about this? How do you write this? A, X, E. So, how many X? Two. Two. How many E? Two. Two. So, whenever you have a, a, an E or a lone pair, most likely it is polar. The only one that is an exception is this. And this is what? The square planar. So if you're going to look at the square planar, usually it's shaped like this. So opposite yung direction nila tapos pareho. So they will cancel out. So even though this is a lone pair, it is non-polar. Okay? BF3. Ano kaya dipole moment dito? Zero or non-zero? Anyone? Hello? Wala akong tubig. Ano? Ano makain na kayo dyan? Is it zero or non zero dipole moment? Does it have a dipole moment? Yes or no? Tataasan ko kaya ng kamay kayo. Does BF3 has a dipole moment? Yes or no? The answer is no. Because it is, if you look at the AX, it is an AX. What? AX3. AX3, it doesn't have a lone pair. So it is what we call zero. Now, how about this? Does CH2, CL2 have a dipole moment? Ito yung shape niya. Okay. So if you're going to look at this, yes. Okay. Because there's a net effect, chlorine obstructing carbon compared to hydrogen. Hello, sir. Yep. Wait, parang nag-cancel sila, sir, yung ano, net dipole niya, sir. Parang nag-cancel siya. But parang nagkaroon siya, sir, ng dipole moment. Kung nag-cancel siya, wala siyang dipole moment. Ah, okay po. We, we cannot have it, it's cancelled because this is how it is. So kahit nasaan yung chlorine, okay, pwedeng i-ano mo, I, I think I have to use the, what we call this one. So, i-ano natin yan, okay? Take it out. Kita nyo? So, new. 
So, kita nyo yan, ha? So, anong gagawin ko dito? Gagawin ko yung isa na chlorine. Kita nyo? So, what can you say? Kita niyo yung model ko? Yes po. Yes po. Okay? So, makikita niyo, so kapag ganito, magkikancel ba siya? So, if it's like this, ihilahin nito yung hide yung electron towards papunta doon. So yung net effect niya is galing dito. Hindi siya pwedeng mag-cancel. Pag ginawa mo dito na ano, hinati mo, usually pababa pa rin yung direction niya. Okay? So question. Kaya niya mag-predict ng polarity. So, tanong? May tanong? Wala tayong quiz. Let's have a break. But next week meron. Especially yung time na hindi tayo mag-meet. Okay? And siguro ganito lang yung gawin natin. So just, uh, uh, minsan kasi, minsan, even though I just teach, let's say, one class a day dito, pero ang dami pa rin ginagawa sa school. And bigla na lang sumasama yung pakiramdam ko during night time. Okay, that's why we were not able to meet last time. So just make sure you read the module, okay? And then anything na ano sa inyo, you watch whatever video, okay? So just be in contact. Because I, I think some of you might have logged in last time, but I already sent the message doon sa, nag-PM na ako doon sa uh, Facebook. Okay? So tanong. Before we call it a week. So, the last part that we have is the theory. So, module 2 has the molecular orbital theory, if I'm not mistaken. And module 3, which is the organic chemistry, has this uh, balance bond theory. So, we're going to finish maybe both module 2 and module 3 next meeting. Okay? Yung part ng module 3 nyo, eh, nasa po, covered na rin yung chapter 10 doon sa lecture ko. And usually, there's no, uh, I think uh, module 3 is not included in the exam. Your first exam on October 14 just covered uh, 1 and 2 module. Okay? So question, before we call it a week,